First question, Jonathan Fagan. Hi. Um, I wonder if you could talk about the addition of Kevin Porter Jr. and uh, what he might be able to bring as he develops. Yeah, I think um, the, the main word that you, you used is him developing. You know, we have to, he hasn't obviously played in a while, so it's going to be up to us to really come up with a good structure for him on and off the court for him to be successful. And uh, we're committed to that. He obviously is very talented. Um, he is versatile on both ends of the floor. He can do a lot on the basketball court. And uh, we feel like we have a, the, the structure in place to uh, let him be successful. And I spoke to him last night and he's excited about the potential of uh, adding to our group. And uh, it's up to us to have honest conversations back and forth and develop a relationship. But um, it's, a, it's an exciting thing to have a young guy who has potential. And, um, you know, I, I feel like what Rafael has done and uh, what Tillman has done and what I'm trying to do kind of align with um, putting something together where he can be successful on and off the floor. Uh, knowing that you and JB are tight, were you able to get input from him to give you confidence in making it work uh, for Kevin? Yeah, yeah, I spoke to JB and uh, we we uh, talked for a while uh, about him. And you know, there's there's a lot there's a lot there, but we are uh, committed. He he made me feel good about getting the kid for sure. Thank you, Adam Spolin. Hey, Stephen, um, you've played Vic about 31, 32 minutes the first two games that that you've had him. Is that kind of his limit at this point? I wouldn't say it's his limit, but I'm trying to keep him right around that that area. And he wasn't playing back to backs with the Pacers. Is that going to remain the same with you? Most likely. So he likely he most likely won't play tomorrow. Um, that's still to be determined. Thank you, Cody Davis. Hey, Coach, along those same lines, if Victor Oladipo is playing, will we see limited minutes from both him and DeMarcus Cousins tonight since you guys have that back-to-back? -back? Um, no, we're, we're going to play the guys, uh, our guys their minutes tonight and, and deal with tomorrow tomorrow. Um, so, yeah, Victor is going to get his minutes and, and Cuz will get his, and then we'll, we'll uh, kind of regroup and, and think about the Mavericks when it's time to. Tim McMahon. Hey, Stephen. Uh, getting back to Kevin Porter Jr. real quick. Um, do you guys have a plan in place right now in terms of when he'll start practicing with you and when he might, uh, when you guys might actually have him active? No, there's there's nothing. It, this thing came like I got a call last night about him and. Uh, and I got in touch with him. Rafael spoke to him. Um, John Lucas spoke to him. And uh, we don't have, we don't really know what the next step is as far as when he's going to be coming down and what the plan is. But that's something we're going to have to sit down and really, really think about um, what's best for him and what's best, best for our group as far as he hasn't done much in a little while. He's been working out at high schools in, uh, in Cleveland, just trying to stay, stay in shape. But that's nothing near playing an NBA game. So I wouldn't anticipate him playing in an NBA game relatively soon, but we just have to make sure that the structure, as I keep kind of saying, is in place for him to be able to succeed on the basketball floor as well as off. Thanks. Ali Kambajani. You know, I wanted to ask you about that structure because you not only have you mentioned it today, but you've mentioned it previously, just establishing good culture with your guys. Um, what is that like for you, especially as a new coach having to establish that? What, is, what has that process been like for you over this first few weeks of the season? It's been difficult, uh, honestly. Um, there's been a lot of change. There's been a lot going on, obviously, with our group. There's been COVID. There's been lack of practice time. There's been so many different things like the the structure that I had in mind I was telling Will Weaver this today the, the structure that I had in mind coming into this job is very different than what we have right now just because of circumstances just because 
uh, guys who I thought were going to be here aren't here just because uh, COVID has um, affected our team to where we don't have guys who we thought were going to play games play uh, aren't aren't playing those games. We have injuries where we have you know eight guys <laughs> ready to play or nine guys ready to play, and then the whole testing stuff where we're having to wake up early and we're having to test twice a day and there's just a lot to it. So I would say the structure isn't exactly what I wanted it to be, but there are some like basic tenets of what I want. And that's being a prepared team, working hard and doing everything we can to become better every single day and putting the um, processes in place in order to do so. So that's an ongoing uh, thing just because of all of the adaptability that we need uh, this season. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's moving in the right direction. Thank you. Mark Berman. Stephen, could you, a couple things, could you give us your starting line tonight and can you give me updates on, on House Wall and, and Christian Wood? Yeah, so our starting lineup tonight will be uh, Gordon, Oladipo, Tate, Tucker and Cousins and uh, Wall's coming along. Um, like I said, last game, it's doubtful that he will play. Well, he's obviously not playing tonight, but this weekend, um, hopefully he'll be back for the Washington game. Wood um, obviously isn't here and uh, isn't playing these two games. Kind of the same thing. Hopefully he'll be back for the, uh, for the Washington game and then House is in a position where I think pretty soon he'll be able to start doing his individual workouts. If he hasn't started them already, I got to double check on that. But, um, you know, he'll be back sooner than later. Ben DeBose. Um, what's the plan for tomorrow against Dallas? I know you said you'll deal with tomorrow, tomorrow, but you mentioned not really knowing uh, if DeMarcus Cousins would start in that game. Is that a situation where you're looking to go smaller or what are you thinking when it comes to matching up with Mavs? Yeah, I mean, I'm dealing with Detroit. <laughs> okay. I'm dealing with the, the Pistons and all of the problems that the, the Pistons uh, cause and, and uh, you know, the, the things that they do and the Griffin post-ups and the uh, improvement of some of the guys on their team. So as far as tomorrow, I'm, I'm going to kind of sleep on it and, and figure <laughs> it out. There's a, obviously, I mean, your question is Cousins versus KP, and that's something I got to figure out. Brian Bearfield. Coach, have you had time? Um, I know that you all have been traveling and stuff, but have you had time to go back and, and review some of the game film on how you all can start out a little bit more aggressive in the first quarter instead of sometimes saying like you all get down and you're playing catch up? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we have uh, we were a lot more aggressive in the last game against Phoenix with our pick and roll defense. We were blitzing some. We were getting into some rotations and uh, that's something that we want to continue doing, being more aggressive on the defensive end, which will hopefully lead to us getting out and running and um, playing a little bit faster offensively. I think we're getting off to slow starts on both ends of the floor, but we control how fast we play on the offensive end. And uh, so I want to make sure that we are getting the ball up early uh, having options ahead of the ball so we could pass ahead and, and attack defenses and, and uh, play a little bit faster because we're playing slower than I, than I really wanted us to. And then on the defensive end, doing things so that we can speed up the uh, opponents and, and not be so reactive, be a little bit more proactive. Thank you, Coach. Oh. 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 So, Coach, I just want to ask you one more question before you left. I apologize. <laughs> yeah. No problem. But with the passing of uh, Hank Aaron today, such a, a a sports icon, have you gotten a chance to talk to your dad about this yet? No, I haven't spoken to him yet about it. It's uh, really sad, though. I mean, uh, it just seems like we're losing so many people, so many great sports icons, so many just icons overall. And... Um, with him, especially just re watching and uh, reading the stuff about him and the reaction that people had to him hitting home runs 
<laughs> you know, all, all he's doing is trying to help his team and hit home runs and people are sending death threats and, and letters and all sorts of things. And you could really see the relief on his face when he broke, finally broke the record and the quote that he had of, you know, I'm just happy it's over. <laughs> you could just see it. And it's, it's a shame that he even had to go through that, but, like I said oh, a week ago, we, we stand on the shoulders of, of people like him who went through a lot in order for us to be in these positions that we are. So we have a responsibility to, um, you know, carry the torch. And it was a different sport, different whatever, but we're all Americans and we're all kind of hoping to be pulling in the same direction. And uh, he was definitely an icon and for him to have to go through that for just hitting home runs is, is uh is really rough to to think about but the grace that he did it with and the uh I mean I guess just the, the admiration that I have for him how he handled it and, and uh, how he moved forward from it was just really really cool stuff thank you thank you coach